If you've been good enough to follow me on my social media pages like Instagram, Twitter and Facebook, then over the last few weeks you'll see that I've been putting up some of the sketches that I've been doing outside in plain air. And these are from my sketchbooks. But today, for this film, what I thought I'd do is go out and film actually me painting on site so you can see how I do it and how long it takes, because that's the most popular question that I get asked. So this is the film. It takes about 30 minutes but I hope you enjoy it and find it informative. This is where I'm thinking of doing the sketch today. It's Bose Castle, it's right on my doorstep, so it's very handy for me to come to. And it's a great subject matter for doing a quick sketch. And I'll film it all so that you can see how I do these daily sketches on my social media page. The sketch pad that I'm using is a spiral bound book and it contains Buckingford watercolour paper of about 90 grams with a knot surface which gives a little bit of texture. The first thing I do is I, I want to place the castle on the page. Now I don't want it to be too central, just slightly over to one side is ideal. In this case I'm putting it over towards the left. I've chosen this subject as the castle is basically a large cube. So once I've established where my eye level is, I need to work out the perspective and that will reflect on the shape of the walls. That's about the right hand corner I think, just about the right spacing. That's the perspective going up of the wall, heading up higher towards the nearer point. There's some little detail down the side of the walls, they're like small buttresses, two of them. So I'll place those in, just about there. And then away on the left. Now this wall is wider than the right hand wall. So I'll place that about there, and then the top of the wall crumbled away. Mark that in, the way off to the to the left would be the vanishing point. And on this wall there's a large crack or a gash. I'll put that in now. And through it you can see the distant wall, the third wall. And I keep the drawing very loose. I don't want to draw big solid black lines at first because the, Getting the shape of the castle is the most important bit. So just roughly and lightly place it in with some of the features, this top window and then these two features which are about here. These are actually the old castle toilets. So there, there's a matching pair. I'll put those just about there. The secret is to keep looking at your subject matter. Have a look, observe and look for the details and the shape. I've now placed in some of the foreground and the castle wall that, that comes round like a zigzag to the front. It's a bit bright now so I'm sorry if you can't see this very clearly but uh, the sun's come out. And there's an indication just giving a hint of the church which is in the background. And then in the distance, there's some nice trees, which I'll put in. They had a nice little detail to the right hand side of the drawing, so it doesn't look too empty. I'm at a more detailed stage of the drawing now. You can see that I've put some of the textured wall on the left hand side. And then just using the pencil a little bit harder to give more strength. I'm looking for values in this drawing, darks and lights because that will reflect in the painting. 
It's the darks and lights that actually give the shape to the drawing. The outline's fine, but you can see foreground and background using the darks and just using the pencil to add some shading. Here on the wall I just add just a hint of what would be the dry stone wall. This grassy bank that comes way to our right. Got some nettles on it, but that's just the shape of it there. It's quite late summer at the minute, so the grass is tall. And then here, just in the foreground, is the wall. And just to give a rough idea that it's a dry stone wall with a little bit of detail. So I've done all the drawing that I think I need now. I'll get my paints out and um, we'll do a bit of watercolour on it. The thing about standing up and painting is you get the view that you want to see but if you sit down you get too relaxed and um, you spend too much time on them and I like when I'm out walking to get these sketches done as quickly as possible so here's my painting kit coming out and I'll use actually I'll use a flat brush today I'll do another film later on um, about what I have in my satchel and also about this great little watercolour box that I've got nice bit of kit and yeah I'll do another film about the stuff that I carry with me because I don't carry a lot um, not in this sort of setup where I'm just out for a walk and then see something I want to sketch most of these are not planned I go out sometimes and just see a nice subject and get the sketchbook out I certainly don't claim to be a brilliant watercolour artist, I love what I do and coming out and sketching on site is time consuming, that's one thing that I think people don't understand that when I come out and do this it's a uh, thing you've, you've got to give time to it, it doesn't matter if it takes 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour, 40 minutes to do, it takes as long as it takes. So this is the little watercolour box that I have. So I put water in there and then I've got my palettes on here. And this is where it becomes a bit of a juggling act, standing up. So I hold the palette and the sketch pad in one hand. And uh, I'll do a bit of painting. And put a bit of wash on. It's quite a good day today because you need it to dry quite quickly so don't put a load of water on. Um, so just putting a hint of colours. As I say I'm using a flat brush which you'll see and then I'll just put an indication of colours for the for the, um, for the castle. I'll just do a little bit of a colour here. Ooh, big blob of ultramarine's come out. And I'm not going to wet the paper, I'm just going to work on the paper because the blue will give a nice contrast to the castle walls and work round where I've done the sketching the flat brush it gives a nice edge put a bit of water in there just to loosen it up a bit and actually all I'm doing is really spreading the paint around because the sky doesn't want to be too strong and overpowering but you want to give an indication of the texture of sky there we've actually got quite a bit of grey cloud coming over so I'm just going to add a bit of crimson in there which makes it into a warm grey I'll bring that in from over here. Let it just bleed in. A nice bit of colour there and bring it down towards the castle there. Watercolours always will dry lighter on the paper. So they look quite strong to start with and by the time they've 
dried up, bring it down into that gap. So we now have got that shape of the castle. The horizon. Quite nice the way that's gone into that. I like that. And if I want, I can add a bit of there's a grey cloud. Just up here now, and while it's wet, bring that in. Won't get too carried away with the sky because it's not the subject matter today. <clears throat> Now what I'm going to do is use a bit of that blue and I've got some covering yellow here and bring that in and it makes quite a nice sky. The blue with the yellow gives a sort of coordination between the two and I'm going to put this in quite bold here, make a good amount of mixture up. I'm going to put this in where that grass is. It's sort of late summer grass, so it's not spring green. So that's got a nice colour in that. I'm going to put that up here to where all these grasses are. And that's all quite tight. Look how I'm putting that on. There's quite a bit of pigment in there. And that's coming away nicely because that's just the bank is definitely dead there as is there, just round the edge of the ward. Now it looks like I'm going from one bit to the other, but I'm using the colour to give a coordination throughout the sketch. And then there's also this longer grass which has been left at the field edge under that wall. And it meets just about there. So you can already see just by putting a little bit of colour on it brings the picture to life. Just to the left of the castle, the grass is a bit lighter over here because the sun was on it a minute ago. And that will go there. Now I'm going to put a colour of the trees in. The trees are actually nice and dark and a bit of blue in there gives them a bit more distance because obviously they're further away than the castle work use the paintbrush to go around the edge of that edge of the church and not be too fussy about being perfect with the trees because trees are trees you have to always bear in mind that this is a sketch. No one's going to necessarily see these. Well, obviously you are, but um, they're the sort of thing that I keep um, together. I have been asked if I would, there was a sketch I did yesterday, someone asked would I sell it to them. And I, I actually don't sell these sketches. These are really for my own practice and enjoyment. And I, it's a bit like a journal, a diary. and just I think like most artists they keep them as a record of where they've been what they've done and we'll refer back to them in future if they want to be doing paintings from them and I'll use these sketches to record ideas and possibilities for future paintings so I'll put a bit of lighter green in now, just get rid of some of this in here. Not being too particular about getting rid of the pigment that's on the palette because it'll all add that coordination in. I'll, this is a different yellow, this is... Um, ooh. Um, Orlean, I think it is, the, the colour. I'm saying that, I think that's how you pronounce it anyway. And, and that's a bit fresher because this is where the grass has been cut just probably yesterday in this hay meadow and I'm just dab that on because that'll go there and 
give an indication of the meadow and a bit more here and because this other green isn't wet it's going to bleed in slight places where it was and it's a bit through the gate just there and then it'll form this bead at the bottom which I actually quite like and then I'll indicate the top of this wall as you can see I haven't actually drawn those stones individually there's a nice bead there that's going to pick up and blend down and it just gets rid of any hard edges that you've got and then because we're getting nearer the front here you can see the wall put that that's basically the grass is in I'll clean up this pallet I could use this pallet over here but I've got a um, I'm going to do this it's quite a nice warm honey colour to the the castle wall so I'm going to do that basically with um, yellow ochre and this is going to be because that is the light wall this is just going to be simple wash like that I'm not even too bothered that I don't cover every little bit of the wall it's just to give that colour onto the wall and now we're into the more shaded area there is a little bit of area here which is still on that side so I'll give that a bit more yellow ochre and now on this side there's still a good bit of light coming in the sun's gone in now but well not gone in but behind the cloud and what I'm going to do I'm going to add some ultramarine into that and then this is all going to get it looks drastic doesn't it it looks well as if I've wrecked it I haven't as I said earlier this will all dry much lighter but the darker tone is bringing in that dimension Castle. In fact, I'll just, I'm going to change that a little bit and take out some of the, the blue. Look at that. Ooh. In some ways, it looks almost wrong, but trust me, this is what it's all about. You're learning. I'm putting a bit more in there now. And I'm not making this a uniform colour. I'm, I'm using a mixture of yellow ochre and letting the ultramarine bleed in. The church bells go in. I'll put a bit more blue in here. That'll work in a minute. just that shed it's there and there's the house as I said earlier those aren't the details that I'm looking for it's the castle that I'm looking for at the minute now the wall is not unlike the colour of the castle wall so just again do a bit of a mixture of colours here but what I'm doing is I'm leaving the top of the edge of the wall free from paint and that'll give even here I'll leave some areas paint free it doesn't don't get too upset <laughs> if one bit of paint bleeds into the other it gives a freedom to the painting I 
which makes it more random. This bit of um, wall at the front, very light, just because that's where the sun was. And then here, again, obviously that's in shadow, so that will get a bit dark on it. I love this bit of, where it's bled into here and the blues come out lovely. It, it um, graduates this, this um, on this paper because it's a bit of a knot surface and then you can see it's actually already brought in a bit of texture onto this side of the wall because of the way the, the paint um, sort of split. Um, uh, and it's just a, a nice effect. Granulation, that was the word I was looking for. It's where the two pigments sort of like go grainy and of course where they've gone grainy they sit into the texture of the paper which gives a texture to this side of the wall it doesn't work every time but it has on this one I'm pleased with it so let's just give this wall a bit more at the front here I'll just bring that out I'm not even going to get down here as far as the, far as the corner of the paper I'll just go to there bring that in bring a bit of that green in from the top and we've got that now the church just give a hint of colour on that taking away good so you can see just by putting this wash on I've now got the color and the pencil showing through for the shape of the um, the castle and just because I'm doing this as a very simple drawing I'm just going to use this flat brush because it's got a nice edge to it but you can also get a point um, to do some fine drawing using the corner of the flat so that's what I'm doing here I'm just bringing a bit of shadow in on this wall this is a very weak um, bit of ultramarine there's probably a bit of ochre in there as well but that'll do no harm put a bit along there and there And then the door here, the big door, is quite a bit darker, so I'm going to put into that a bit of ultramarine and burnt sienna. It's got a nice dark. To it. Take that down. Again, same mix of colour. I'm going to come up. Put a bit more indication of shape to the building in here that was always going to be a bit lighter in there that comes down and then actually inside is darker still but only slightly toned darker in there behind in there is that And that will come down. And then where this face is gone, that's to there. Now even though that area there isn't quite dry, it's allowing me to put a little bit of paint on and where it has dried, I get a nice sharp edge to the stonework 
but where it's still slightly damp, it'll bleed in. And that's a lovely random effect. So I'll just give a bit more. I like the idea of the stonework here, and there's the arch there, which goes around that way. This inner wall is just slightly darker because that's the depth of the wall, the thickness of the wall, shall I say. We'll go back to here where that comes in. I'll add an extra bit of depth into that in a minute. Go down there and there. I have no idea how long this is taking me. I just don't usually talk to myself, of course, but I'm doing it for the camera. Well, actually, sometimes I might talk to myself, but I don't know I'm doing it. Um, so, but it, it's not, when people ask me, how long do they take? It's not really important how long. I have a feeling this might be longer because it's a more complicated subject than some others, but I'm not bothered. I mean, I enjoy what we're doing. Oh, I love that. That's got a nice bit of dimension to it now with that. There's that dark area there. Just by adding those few dabs of painting, it's almost given that idea of the texture of the the wall, castle wall there. I'm leaving that bit of colour. There's shading there, so that would give shadow on that bank. And up here, I want to mess around here because that's But even though that wall is lighter, I want to add some texture in it. So just over here, I'll dry the brush a bit and then we'll put a bit of dry brush down there. And that brings out that buttress and that one. And we're in the background. Now that the church is dry, we'll just give it a bit of distance on there. I could nearly leave this now but I want to just bring in an extra bit of depth into a couple of areas by adding a bit of ultramarine and burnt sienna again. And hopefully that the area that I want to put it in is going to be dry enough to take a little bit of detail just there and I'll make that darker. Just using the edge of this flat brush. I mean, I, I've got other brushes with me and I could get them out. All good practice and this will do for now And by keeping just to the one brush, you're not messing on with uh, changing brushes and... That's, that's great if you've got plenty of time and you're sitting down. But as I say, you've got to remember that I'm standing up doing this. Which is not the best position for an old man to be out painting. And now I'm using just this very tip of the brush to put a bit of extra relief into the stonework.
this is me I'm thinking I don't want to go too much further and, and do it well don't forget that window he sits there just give that indication I'm pleased with that castle it's come out really well simplicity to it just a little bit of rich oak in there because that's a lovely bit of honey coloured stone just in there with, with the sun on it earlier as, as you can tell now it's gone dull but that's that's good and then I just use a bit of this ultramarine again and I'm going to use the flat edge of the brush just to give some more shape to the wall. Now, if you've been watching me on social media, sometimes what I've done is I've been using a, few, a bit of pen and wash to bring out some of the shape to some of my drawing. And I could do that here now, but to be honest, I'm just looking at doing a, a watercolor today. keeping it really simple and it's tempting oh I mean I'm probably doing it now I'm just fiddling a bit which is not the way to do it the, the, you don't want to fiddle on a sketch it's got to be free it's got to be um, loose so there's just a bit more depth into here and that gives a Bit of shadow, something of interest along there. And then that bank just needs a bit of texture in it. Bring a bit of colour into there. And do you know, I'm really thinking that for the time I've given myself, shape of that tree what I do now is I'm getting near the end of what I'm doing and if you can see on my palette I'm using my brush to pick up some of the colors that I've got on my palette and simply just using them up so that I'm leaving my palette fairly clean which is daft really because I can use a bit of the kitchen paper to to do that but the colors that I've been using in the picture are sitting on my palette so if I can use them to give an extra little bit of detail like I'm doing on these trees then that's what we've got and I'm pretty sure that's what I'm doing so I'm gonna leave it at that because this was all I was after doing the plan was just to come out <clears throat> and do a simple drawing sketch of a moss stop fiddling but um, just to give you an idea of what I do with my sketching and how I do sketches and hopefully you've got an idea of what I've done and if it inspires you to go out and do your own painting they don't have to be brilliant remember you don't even have to show them to anybody but look I'm out in the fresh air Bailey's sitting here enjoying the sunshine or what was the sunshine and this is me out sketching doing my plain air sketching so yeah I think I'll call that for now and then I'll go back to the, the studio and have a look at it I'm not going to do any more work on it and I'll talk to you about then when I come back to the studio I usually make some pencil notes about the day the weather but I don't usually adjust the sketches I just leave them as they are that's how I did them out on on site well I hope you've enjoyed the film if you like it then do click the like button and even better subscribe to the channel and why not leave a comment in the box below because if you respond to uh, what I put up then I'll know what to put up on my YouTube channel but as I always say thanks for watching